Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome out to tonight's weekly training webinar for uh, for all the members of Tax Sales Support. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, tonight we're going to be going over uh, buying land and how to buy land online, and and you know really kind of why we love land and encourage our students to get started with land if they're getting started with tax deeds. Yeah, yeah. We, we'll make you a believer, you know, because uh, we feel like it's especially if you're just getting started. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, once you've got experience, then, you know, go out there and, and tackle structured properties, homes, commercial properties, things like that. But to begin with, you know, land really is one of the safest ways you can get started uh, as tax, as a tax sale investor. Yeah. Now, for uh, news and announcements here, uh, the main thing to get out here right now is we have a three day event coming up soon in Orlando, Florida, you know, December 13th, 14th, and 15th, uh, that uh, we would, you know, uh, well, really, it's already filling up. I think you mentioned we had three people enrolled today. Yeah, yeah. So we had, uh, you know, three people that just uh, signed up today. So if you're interested, let us know. Uh, it's going to be a, a great opportunity. The, the last one we held in Las Vegas was a great success. We really enjoyed meeting everyone and so we had a lot of students that are located on the east coast and this gives us a chance to uh, you know put on an event uh, for all of our students out there on the east coast but also uh, help them get ready for this new year yeah yeah which there will be tons of opportunities uh, coming up there and uh, yeah it'll be a good chance to uh, to look at uh, also some of the opportunities that are out there and some of the stuff that's happening yeah exactly you know, one other thing, if you guys have any uh, general tax sell questions, uh, go ahead and ask them in the forum. We have that manned uh, by tax sell coaches. So any questions you have, uh, it's a great place to ask. And, and we're really trying to kind of build a community there. Now, the uh, the topic for tonight, we want to talk about getting started with, uh, you know, with tax deed land uh, online. And, uh, and you know, we're going to be looking at some of the different reasons, ways that uh, that land work out so well here in the beginning when you're going to get started. You know, land though, uh, you know, has is just always been what we've primarily looked at with tax sales. You know, we uh, we've we've been looking at land from the beginning, and and uh, and we love investments in the land. Yeah, yeah. Well, it really was kind of a, a learning process because in the beginning we, you know, we started with land, but that was because. That was because of need, because we didn't have the cash to do structures. And we really thought that structures were where, you know, homes and things like that was where the most money can be made. Yeah. And, you know, as, as we started investing and learning more and more, we started noticing all of the benefits uh, that are available when you invest in land. Well, it's just so much more likely to be included in a sale and so there's so much more of it you know that is there when you are dealing with the structures you know you're usually dealing with a small percentage of whatever is available in the auction yeah yeah you know think of it a little bit like a car auction let's say you're going to a car auction and there's 100 vehicles you know and maybe there's you know two or three vehicles that are you know um you know, a Ferrari or something like that. Yeah, it's like everybody kind of, you know, it's like focusing on those yeah, threes. But there, but there may be a motor home that's just as valued, is just as valuable as the Ferrari that nobody's looking at that you could pick up for, you know, way less and turn around and make a good profit on it. Yeah, and you know, so essentially, like right, it kind of depends, you know, it, you know, some people say, well, I only want to make money on Ferraris, you yeah. know, but at the same time, you know, if uh, if a person just wants to make money, there, uh, there are things that are just as valuable. They're just not quite as sexy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and that's kind of the way that you're going to look at it as you get started with with tax deeds. And we're talking about buying them online, which will be either online auctions or over the counter. But really, these strategies are going to be utilized whether you're buying them online or you're attending a good old fashioned auction. Yeah. So uh, the question here that we're going to uh, to look at there is. You know, why do we recommend, you know, starting with, uh, you know, starting to buy uh, tax deeds and having that also be land and online for the very first investment? Why is that something that we that we uh, recommend or push? Yeah, exactly. Why why would we recommend buying land as our first investment and, and, and doing it online as well? Well, doing it online 
just makes sense because that's going to be the easiest way for most of us. Not all of us live within a tax deed state, you know, and so we may have to look outside of our own state to get started unless we're willing to travel. You know, we're going to work at most likely going to be looking at some type of online opportunity. And the future of tax sale investing is online anyway. You know, there will only be you know, more and more opportunities added online. And so uh, I think it's only wise to be looking at the online stuff because it's the direction things are headed anyway. Uh, so but there are a lot of other reasons, though, that we would uh, that we would push somebody towards uh, towards land and uh, also you know, particularly towards tax sell land you know and that is uh, because of the price uh, and also that you're going to find a lot more of the, uh, the land itself available uh, and generally less competition you know for each property you're trying to pick up yeah absolutely you can invest in land regardless of your location so you know we're located in in utah we just bought some land this week in michigan you know totally uh, you know, unseen. Yeah, thousands of miles away, a thousand miles away, we never actually visited the property. And so with land, you can buy them for a lot cheaper than you can with homes and structures because like we mentioned, everyone's looking at those homes and structures. So there's really good opportunity for the investor that's willing to evaluate the good usable land. Yeah, yeah, there is uh, a lot more of it uh, that is there. But yeah, we don't have to have somebody there to inspect the property and that makes our due diligence quite a bit easier. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely the cheapest way to buy property, uh, period, is through a, a land tax sale. Yeah, yeah. Now, you know, some of the reasons why, as you're getting started, why we might tell you to avoid, um, you know, structured property or properties with improvements, uh, because in the beginning, we probably would tell you that, you know, it's not going to be the best thing to do for your first investment. Yeah, you know, improved property account for less than 25%, and that's actually a really generous number. You know, some auctions may have that many homes in there. We've seen some auctions where maybe maybe as five or ten percent are are structure type properties and ninety percent is land. So there's going to be a lot more of it available. And so with if there's only going to be so many structures, there's going to be obviously more competition on it. Yeah, uh, and you know, at the end of the day too, um, you know, nobody wants to lose money, uh, but you know. Whether or not you know somebody's going to lose their property uh, comes down to a lot of different factors. You know, a, a lot of it will come down to uh, to who's affected by its loss and uh, and you know who's uh, who owns it. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, land is far more likely to be owned outright. You know, uh, it's far more likely to be owned by a single individual rather than you know having a whole bunch of different people involved or uh, or. Uh, mortgages, things like that, um, and just those some of those things alone make it far more likely to end up in a tax sale. Yeah. Also, as the as the auction you know comes up, there's going to be some properties that end up redeeming, meaning the property owner hurry they're able to hurry and get that money together to pay off the delinquent tax so that it doesn't go to the tax deed foreclosure. Well, if it's a structured property and somebody's actually living in the home there's a lot higher chance that they're going to pay that off before the auction so that you're not even going to get a chance to bid on it because it gets paid off, you know, with 24 yeah. to 48 hours before the sale. Yeah, much higher chance of redemption there with homes because somebody is, you know, would be displaced. You know, yeah. it's, it's going to, you know, it, the effects are real there for, um, for somebody. It's also consequently more valuable. Uh, and, you know, therefore, you know, they are losing more money, but also there's going to be more people that are involved, uh, you know, on stuff like the paperwork with the ownership of the property, uh, more people to get involved to step in and make sure it doesn't happen. Yeah, well, and if we are buying some type of structured property, what you know, like a home, we need to have a visual inspection, an on-site inspection. Now that can be done by somebody else. We can send a handyman out there to take photographs and send them to us or a photographer uh, or we may travel there ourselves, but we need to have some type of current photo uh, of the property so that we can judge the condition. And so with land, that's not something that we're going to have to worry about. We can usually get all the information we need off of the online resources. We can't trust online resources when it comes to, to structured property like homes. Yeah, you know, one of the risks that, uh, you know, that are out there, a very real risk, you know, that you could make as an investor is, uh, you know, not evaluating 
uh, repairs properly or you know I'm not accounting for things that might be needed with a structured property uh, and uh, therefore you know kind of committing yourself to a larger financial investment or you know owning a property with problems yeah it doesn't mean that you can't make money with structured properties and that eventually you may get into structured properties but if you're a new investor and especially a new tax sale investor you know, getting started with land is going to help you avoid making some some costly mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Basically, is uh, is a simpler way to um, you know to buy, but there are also a lot of benefits you know that uh, that land offers. Um, you know, we mentioned that uh, there are uh, there's going to be a lot more of it. You know, that is available, uh, but it also gets constantly overlooked. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. People, you know, when they think, when when real estate investors oftentimes, you know, when, when they are thinking they want to invest in real estate, they tend, tend to think of sexy stuff too. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of funny how our, you know, our views have even changed over the last 15 or 20 years. Uh, you know, if we're looking at a tax sell list and let's say there's some $500,000 home, that's interesting to us. Oh, no, look at this beautiful home. But if there's a five hundred thousand dollar lot that could be subdivided in a great area, yeah, that's way more I mean, interesting. That to us is the sex, you know, that's, and it has a much higher chance yeah, of actually going get, to, the, you know, to the auction. Yeah, you can't get anything more beautiful than that because, uh, you know, we're not going to, we don't need to worry about all of those things like foundations and roofs or any of that. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, it's just a big piece of land with a ton of potential. You know, it could be anything. Uh, you know, or, you know, has has the potential to be used for a lot of things, um, you know, so in that way, it's a lot easier for us to uh, to, you know, buy it. And also that also translates to selling it makes it easier to sell. You yeah. Know, you know, you're not going to have to do showings for the property or something like that. Yeah, exactly. You don't need to worry about, you know, sending somebody out there to view the property or a realtor or anything like that. As like Shay mentioned, in, in actually showing or viewing the property, anyone can drive by and see it. Yeah, it's definitely going to be the uh, the best deals, you know, to come out of tax sales or you know with counties and tax sales is always land. Yeah. Yeah, and the land we can get sometimes with uh, with for almost you know for very little or almost nothing. You know, we're also able to eliminate all of the risks associated with uh, you know with any kind of structural improvements yeah age condition improvements really the only thing that we need to worry about with land is is we need to make sure that it has both use and value yeah you know and so some of the ways we check that we make sure that it's accessible by public road um, and that uh, it is also usable for its intended zoning purpose yeah so if it's a uh, zone residential we want to make sure it's big enough for uh, you know a house you know, if it's uh, on something else, we want to make sure it can be used for that purpose. So, you know, commercial, we want to make sure that it uh, it had some commercial use. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so we're able to eliminate a bunch of the things that we would have to worry about if we were if we were dealing in uh, in some type of structured property. Yeah. So as far as our options, we really have two different options when it comes to buying tax deeds. Uh, number one is going to be online auctions, and number two is going to be uh, over-the-counter property. And so, you know, with online auctions, they really are something that me and Shade first, you know, started seeing happen in, you know, 2003, 2004, 2005, and there was just a couple to begin with, to begin with, but there really is just a ton of opportunity with online auctions. Yeah, in fact, um one of the things that's happened is just the number of auctions, the number of counties, you know, that are offering their properties to auction, this has gone up. And uh, so the number of auctions every year goes up. And, you know, we think that's going to be a trend that we'll continue to see. You know, there's just going to be more and more of them that are, you know, they're being added to the roles of, uh, of you know, uh, places that offer online auctions, which is excellent for us because it just makes it possible for us to buy there that much easier. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you can go and see all of the online auctions that are taking place within the list center and see what different auctions are taking place, which different uh, counties are being added to the list uh, there with, within the list center. Yeah, the uh, what's happened with the online auction providers, so there's still a relatively small number of 
online auction providers, you know, that are out there. But what's happened is, is they've you know, just collected more of the work and uh, and grown. And so uh, between you know these companies here, we have uh, most of the uh, you know most of the auctions that take place. You know, there are uh, some counties that kind of have their own <coughs> stuff set up, but for the most part, you know, these guys cover or handle uh, most of it. Yeah, yeah. There's some different uh, companies out there, maybe about a dozen total of smaller websites or little companies that will do sales. You know, sometimes there's local companies like in South Carolina or Virginia or different places that'll do, uh, you know, sales within that area. But like Shade said, these are the big boys, you know, bid for assets, real auction, Grand Street Group. Uh, SRI Auctions is actually their online auction division is called Zeus. Uh, auctions and then civic source and so you know probably 80 90 percent of the auctions that are online are going to be held through one of these major providers yeah um of course you know the other option there though is uh is to buy it over the counter you know which uh you know over the counter is going to give us the opportunity to buy these properties after the sale directly from the county. So we get the added benefit of not competing with anybody and being able to pay the minimum uh, bid price to acquire it. Yeah, and that's one of the major benefits with over-the-counter properties is we're not gonna be bidding up the price. So, <clears throat> you know, whatever that, that delinquent tax is, that's usually what we're able to get it, get it for. In fact, there's some opportunities where if properties have been on the book for a long time, you could pick it up for even less than the back taxes. And so when it comes to over the counter, there really is thousands and thousands of properties available in, you know, dozens of different states across the country where you could pick up these over the counter deeds. Now, the term over the counter is not a general term that is known between counties. In fact, there is um, an incredibly low amount of, uh, of of work that counties do with each other you know or that they have you know especially in between states county counties in different states never talk to each other never have no you know and and uh and so terminology and things like that are completely different um that's part of what you need to know going into an area is what the terms are and the terminology that they use because if you don't know the terminology you can feel pretty lost yeah well it may be hard to find the information just knowing what the what the term is or what it's called within that county is going to make it easier to find the information on you know even just doing a search on the website um, but you know some of the most common names are going to be something like assignment purchasing county owned uh, tax forfeited or forfeited land uh, land bank uh, repository property uh, struck off and then upset bid and list of lands and there's actually some more. These are just kind of the most common ones. Yeah, yeah, that's just a, a whole bunch of them. But yeah, all of those essentially mean over the counter. And, you know, and that really just means it there's was county fun. held, you know. Mm -hmm. There's, there's, uh, oh, I know there's other ones too, but there is just a ton of different uh, terminology they, they can use. Now, one thing we've done with the state guides is if they do use a particular terminology within that, state we've tried to list it within the state guide to help you narrow down that information yeah and so uh, when we when we're looking at buying you know potential land or if uh, if we are uh, looking at property what exactly is it you know uh, that we're looking for uh, with a uh, with a piece of property and here, let's talk about some of the different characteristics that uh, are important to us and, uh, and you know, kind of the role that they play. So, uh, you know, the size and location of the lot is kind of one of those first things that we try to look at and, uh, and see for lots of reasons. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's going to be one of the first things we look at besides price as we get into the county records, you know, or if it's on the list, that's going to help us determine if we even want it to research it or not. And part of the reason is, is because there's a ton of junk properties, small, uh, thin strips of land, uh, different types of properties like that, that are going to be smaller than 0.10th of an acre. And so usually, you know, we're going to avoid looking at properties that are smaller than that. And there may be a small, there may be exceptions in certain areas of the country where they have lots that may be 
0.9 mobile home lots, things like that. But usually, if it's smaller than a tenth an acre, it may not have any type of use. Yeah, and that's actually something that's probably controlled too by um, by county and by you know city or county oh, uh, ordinance. Yeah, and, absolutely. And you know when 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 they are designing an area, you know, or uh, developing, you know, an area there's always going to end up being i think they, they try to develop it to make the most effective use of the land um, but they are always going to end up with pieces that are left over in a way and yeah those do just constantly cycle through the system over and over again what we want to avoid is buying one of those you know we only want to pick up property that has uh, you know that has use and and value and that's part of what we can determine by getting a, an overhead map you yeah. know um Part of that use is making sure that it's accessible or, you know, from a public road. Um, but the shape also, you know, can change how effective or usable it is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we're going to see that information. Sometimes the size will be in um, in feet. So it'll say 100 by 250 feet. Sometimes it'll be in square, in square footage. Or sometimes it can be a percentage of an acre, like point. 0.25 or 0.39 of an acre, um, but all of those are going to be things that we're going to be looking for to let us know what the size of the property is. Yeah, and so uh, yeah, if it's if it is large enough for the zoned purpose uh, and it's accessible, then uh, from there we can kind of move on, you know, in, into uh, you know, in other aspects of it because we've been able to define at that point that it does have you know potential use. You know, at that point we want to know what the value of it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the next thing we're going to do is check the value. Um, you know, we're going to look at the assessed value, but we're also going to look into the market value as well in this stage. Yeah. Now, uh, both of them are going to be important to us uh, because, of course, if we own this property, it'll be our choice on how we go to sell it. Uh, what we're trying to really determine, though, is you know how much we should potentially pay for it if it's worth paying anything at all, uh, and so. Uh, one of the things that we can look at in order to determine that is uh, we can use the county's assessment on the property. We can also look um, at the history of the property and how much it has sold for in the past. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, as we're going through it, if we've seen that it sold recently or semi-recently within the last five, ten years, uh, and how much it sold for or how long ago it did sell for. All of that information is going to show us when was the last time somebody purchased it, how much did they pay for it, you know, what type of, of deed uh, was there. And so as we look into that property history value, we're actually going to get some of the other information we're looking for as well. Yeah, yeah. So all of those, every aspect of that tells us tells us something new. The accessibility, I guess, something I kind of talked about there, you know, in the beginning there um, that we're looking at overhead but uh, i still think it's important to uh to talk about because it can also be something that can uh that can affect the likelihood or whether or not the property is going to have easements you know we're always looking at how the property is uh is accessed and how it might be used that way yeah absolutely we need to make sure you know that the property does have some type of road access so whether that be it you know has an easement that allows it uh you know somebody to drive through another property to get there, which is going to be rare. Uh, but most properties, we're just looking uh, for properties that are going to have direct road access. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we want, we want there to, uh, there needs to be, uh, you know, direct access there because a landlocked property is almost always going to be a problem to sell. Yeah, definitely. You know, it, you know especially because you just, the owner can't access it, you know, legally any, you know, any way. You know, the next thing we're going to be looking at is the zoning. Uh, and zoning really comes down to the city and county level on how the property is going to be zoned, depending if it is, you know, within the county or if it's zoned within the city uh, zoning requirements. Yeah, yeah. Beyond zoning, it's really just either, you know, vacant or improved. So the zoning can have a big effect on, uh, on its value as well, you know, in good ways, you know, and the properties that have uh, special zoning oftentimes are in greater demand because there's less of it. Yeah, well, zoning is how the government controls how the land is used for. So whether that zoning be, you know, recreational or residential or commercial or industrial, 
all of these zones are going to have different classifications and within that you know and essentially property with it that are going to build or be used within there have to fit within those guidelines yeah it's really about their uh their urban planning or land yeah so planning. You, you know as much as you want to you couldn't build a residential property in a commercial property unless you got that rezoned or somehow got that worked out yeah now um you know next to that value uh, you know as we're looking at the property we're trying to get an idea for you know what the property can be used for you know if it has a uh, you know if it has a use so for instance if it's a uh, if it is a residential vacant lot you know is it a, a lot that could be used for a home you know that would make that a you know a usable property you know for a home but if you couldn't put a home on there we couldn't very well say it was usable well, and that's kind of a little bit where all of those other questions, as far as the size, the zoning, the accessibility, all of those come into play for the property use. Where, you know, you know, just like you mentioned, what can the property use for? You know, really, what we need to make sure is that it has some type of use, that, um, regardless yeah. of what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real world <laughs> use and that farmland. It can be farmed. If it's residential, you can build on it. The one thing we don't want to buy is a small strip of land yeah yeah um, you know you, you also want to uh to uh, consider your exit strategy so before you buy you want to have a good idea for how you would plan to sell that property in other words you know, when you do buy something it should be because you already kind of have a plan for how you would sell yeah yeah absolutely with all of our coaching students is we're buying property we've at least got an idea of what we're going to do with it you know before we've even made the offer so we've got an idea are we going to be wholesaling this property are we is this a property that we want to take through quiet title you know and get uh you know financing for or, mm -hmm. yeah or you know are we going to sell this with seller financing yeah because we might take a completely different approach if we're going to do seller financing from the start yeah yeah absolutely you know are we going to offer it to the neighbors for a discount that's mm -hmm. something that we do as well uh once we purchased any of these lots letting the neighbors know hey we purchased this property if you're interested we'll give it to you for a highly discounted cost is a quick way to get rid of the property yeah in fact you know that's one of the nice things. And if, if you are making your purchases, by the way, based off of, uh, you know, based off of your exit strategy, you're always going to be safe because, yeah. uh, you know, you're doing that based on comps and what is out there for sale and what's happening in the market right then. So you're really educating yourself pretty well for, uh, you know, for that kind of a price point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So as, as far as targeting the right land, so go, go through and talk a little bit about that. I think that's kind of something we've already come a little bit. So as far as land to target, you know, one thing that we're going to look for, and this is one of the most common, um, but it, it it is kind of our bread and butter is improved residential lots. Yeah. And residential lots, period. Yeah. Non improved and improved. Yeah. Which, uh, you know. Um, in Sangal, in, improved vacant lots or you know unimproved vacant lots um, is really about uh, uh, whether or not they have uh, any kind of utility needed, uh, you know, right there at the property, you know, to uh, to be used, or whether that's something you know that additional work would have to be done for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is there curb? Is there gutter? Is the power and water all there? So if we're looking at a property that's in, you know within a a newer subdivision and there's a bunch of homes all within that subdivision there's one empty lot you know that lot has power and water if we're looking at more of a county road that may be more of a non-improved lot because there isn't uh, the power you know there probably is going to be power close to the road in a lot of them but it's not set up as an improved lot yeah definitely and you know uh, they you can also have to do with an address as well yeah you know something else to, to think about or consider is that oftentimes though whether um, an improved lot could mean a lot that is ready for a trailer you know it can mean a lot that that's is uh, that, that's had a trailer before and has all the hookups and that actually is um, is a very valuable asset for the property to have you know if it's set up for a trailer uh, it's going to uh, be able to attract buyers yeah uh, the next type, probably the second most common, is going to be commercial land. Oh, sorry. I guess we can actually, actually, we probably go through them all that way. Anyway. 
So residential lots, like we talked about, they really are, uh, you know, one of uh, the most common uh, that we're going to see. And to give you guys kind of an idea, here are some different types of residential lots uh, picked up by uh, some of our coaching students. Yeah, and they, you know, I think all of these look great. But we always love properties in areas where, you know, there are already homes. You know, um, what we don't want is to buy a lot in the uh, in the uh, the community that was never built. You yeah. Know? Uh, you know, we 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 like uh, areas, you know, where there are. Uh, property owners and also, you know, vacant or empty lots that are available because we always know that those have value. Yeah, well, even looking at, at these three different property examples, the property on the far left and the property on the far right are what we would classify as improved residential lots. Mm -hmm. You know, they have curb gutter, they're within, uh, you know, set subdivisions. The property in the middle is actually, you know, well, it kind of probably is improved as well in some ways, but it's a more rural lot, a trailer lot. Yeah, you know, you can see that there's a trailer next door to it. Somebody could build a trailer within that area. So really, what they would probably have to do, because there's, you know, uh, power and water, they probably do really have power and water right there at the, at the street. But it hasn't been cleared. There's nothing like that. You've got to go in there and do that before before uh, building the trailer. Yeah, or putting the trailer on it. Yeah, commercial land is something that we uh, that it's very attractive. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of times commercial property is going to be a lot more valuable than residential land. It's also going to be less of it, but it can be sold for a higher profit. Yeah, yeah, there are uh, there is greater potential profit there on it because there is just less available commercial land. And so, uh, whenever we see commercial land, we're always interested in you know seeing you know what it is and uh, and you know and picking it up if possible because. Uh, you know, something else with commercial property is that we're selling it to a different group of potential buyers. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, they, it could be a situation where we're selling it as a cash sale and somebody, and really kind of wholesaling it and somebody goes through the pro process to get quiet title and, you know, do all of that. Or we could even go through the process of getting a warranty deed because commercial land is going to have more valuable. So it may make sense to go through, spend the money to get quiet title so you could sell that for top dollar where uh, somebody could get financing because, you know, depending on the type of commercial land, it could be high, it could be more valuable. Yeah. Probably is. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, the, I think the other thing that commercial land can also work out really well with is seller financing. Yeah. You know, because you have people that are looking, you know, uh, oftentimes, you know, something business related to do there with that, you know, with that lot and uh, and seller financing is, you know, is always optional. You know, commercial can really be followed different lots of different types of land uh, land. I mean, something even like retail, mm -hmm. you know, would be under the kind of that commercial uh, banner. Yeah. Yeah. Which, um, you know, uh, Michael's example is a great example here on, on a commercial lot, you know, and the kind of thing that ends up in a tax sale. You know, this property here, um, you know, was uh, located in uh, in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, and uh, it was a commercial piece located in the middle of downtown, you know, downtown area. Uh, you know, you can see it's actually a Wendy's there off there to the right, but it was, um, it it had in some improvements and, you know, the, the, uh, the, it was paved basically, or, you know, it had, uh, it had asphalt on it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is a perfect example, like Shade said, of, of a property you could pick up and turn around and sell. You know, a business could buy this and automatically put on a car lot or a storage, you know, or, or you know, lots of different things. You could put a fence around it. There's a lot of opportunity, um, you know, with just, with just purchasing it as is. Yeah. And then somebody, of course, could improve on it and put a restaurant or whatever they wanted to on it but yeah 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 really the value on it was pretty good too um yeah now also something else we're going to target here are large plots of land oh we love large plots of land yeah yeah exactly you know it's one of the first things we're going to look for is is those larger pieces because it's gonna there's going to be less of it but also just like commercial land you know when we're looking at land there's going to be a lot of residential and and just kind of your residential building lots. And then as we get into commercial, you know, there's going to be a little less and, and with large plots of land, there's going to be a little less, but these have such a higher value. You can make a higher potential profit because these properties could be worth 30, 
to a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars. Oh yeah, in fact, yeah, um, uh, you know, I think that they represent some of the best potential real estate opportunities in the nation. You know, if you can find certain certain plots of land there with that uh, with with tax sales and well in some you know it's kind of there's going to be different uses some you could have large plot of land that's really just more recreational you know we've seen mm -hmm. some of that in in certain areas of michigan and then there's other parts where there's going to be you know it could be used for developing or or something like that which is even going to have a, a lot more value yeah yeah if you can develop some land that's is a great way to uh to take some land and to turn it and make it even more valuable yeah oh you know what's interesting um you know we had dan on um this last time uh and he actually sold that property on the right oh that's sweet yeah here's a couple of, of you know uh larger larger pieces of land and these aren't you know massive in fact if we were going to show one in dan's it probably should have showed the the uh the 24 acres because that's more of, of even the larger types that we like to look at but you know these are larger type properties 2.4 acres 3.1 acres you know anywhere between uh when we talk about larger really probably anywhere between an acre to you know, a hundred acres or two hundred acres. You know, as big as as big as there could be possible. Yeah, definitely. In fact, um, you know, we. I mean, in some places, a half acre feels like a big lot. You know, it's yeah. it, it kind of depending on what's available. Uh, so the bigger, the better, though. In in almost all cases, um, you know, yeah. In fact, uh, we were just talking with the uh, with the member that that uh, that bought the uh, the property there on the right. Um, and, you know, I think he, uh, he told us that he ended up selling that for, for 9,000, I think he said, yeah. you know, and so he did, you know, he did pretty well on, uh, on, on that particular lot, you know, considering that, yeah, that he paid uh, a couple thousand bucks for it. Yeah, and I'm sure it was, you know, a wholesale type deal where you're just selling it, uh, turning around, you know, three times, you know, getting three times what you paid for it. Yeah, really though. Four times, I guess. Yeah, any kind of a big chunk of land, you know, could have, uh, you know, has value and and you know could be worth picking up. But we've seen uh, a lot of different types, you know, including things like like uh, like boat slips. Yeah, in fact, know. we saw that just recently. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, boat slips starting at a hundred dollars. In fact, we, you know, I would have been interested to bid on one just to see because. Uh, you know, in looking at the ones for sale, a lot of them were between five to eight grand for like these 40 foot boat slips. But it's just similar to a piece of real estate where you are, you know, no, you have to pay it. There's going to be association, kind yeah. Of that's piece. the one thing that that's the one thing that's going to be different is there is going to be a big association fee, and that was part of the and looking into it is you know, it's going to be a four or five hundred dollars. So you're going to really want to make sure you're going to be able to sell that. Otherwise you're going to be paying four or $500 in, in like boat fees, you know, association fees. And it was a really nice setup. Yeah. You know, they had uh, all kinds of uh, clubhouses and the boat slips actually had power and water and all these things you could plug into. Yeah. Yeah. They're uh, you know, a good example of a, of another kind of opportunity um, but also, you know, there's it can be opportunities with things like um, like farmland, you know, or lots that you know that look like they could be used uh, for agricultural purposes, you know, for farming. Um, any kind of mobile home lot, you know, we, we're interested in. Yeah, absolutely. Even just selling a lot to a neighbor uh, where they may want to use it to store something on. Yeah. You know, people could buy property just because they don't have enough parking and they want to park some vehicles or park a, a motorhome or something like that on the property next door to theirs, but don't own that property. Well, that's a great way, maybe, it, you know, a great way for you to sell that to them, make a good profit. And, you know, then now they legally own uh, yeah. a place that they can park their, their motorhome or trailer. Yeah, and for the right price, they will, you know, they will jump on that. It's something, you know, they may not have considered doing it, you know, but at the right price, it's so worth it to them to do it anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And when we're talking about buying these properties, we're talking about, you know, being able to get them for as little as 10 cents on the dollar. Uh, you know, maybe some of the higher, more expensive, nicer properties could, if they're going at auction, can bid up higher than that. 
But if we're looking at over-the-counter list, if, if we're looking at uh, some types of auctions, we can usually get these properties around that type of price. Yeah, which is the only, you know, definitely the cheapest way you're going to be able to acquire real estate, you know, in America. And uh, it is yeah, definitely the cheapest of tax sales, you know, you know, those are the cheapest way to pick. Well, up. and we're talking about tax deeds here, but these same strategies can apply with tax liens. Yeah. You know, in fact, if we're looking at tax liens, you would have a higher chance of actually acquiring the property after the sale. But the competition thing still applies with tax liens. You know, people will bid on a $200,000 home and bid that interest rate down to 6%. And on the $200,000 piece of land, maybe it ends up getting bid down to 17.5%. Yeah, because the home is more sexy, even for the lien, even though the reality is they're both going to end up redeeming because they both have high value. Yeah. And, you know, but there's a lot more people trying to buy the lien against the single family house than there are against, you know, that piece of land. You know, therefore, you could earn a you know, higher rate of return and still have your money just as secure. Yeah, exactly. We we would way rather, you know, earn 17 and a half percent off a piece of land than 6% off a structured property. Because like Shade said, you know, 95% of chances are we're going to get this redeemed. We're never even going to own the property with a tax lien. Um, but when it comes to land, it's a great way to start, regardless if you're starting with tax liens or tax deeds. Yeah, it, well, it's, it's uh, yeah, that's true. That actually is, is, uh, is true with both of them. Uh, but it is a good way to uh, to get started, <clears throat> and it's a way to alleviate a lot of the potential problems, especially if we're talking about deeds and trying to acquire property. It's a great baby step for you to take when you're trying to uh, you know buy your first tax deeds, uh, and you know you're still trying to uh, to get started. You can buy tax deeds for very low dollar amounts that still have tremendous value. Yeah, absolutely, and you can do the research from from your home you know based on our online research we can research the online gsi maps to see where the property is located uh where the lot lines are uh what the what the overhead images look like we can get street views we can get county record information we can get uh you know do comparables and based off of all of that online information we can make a decision without ever going to the property or without ever sending somebody out there to do it if we're looking at land in, in most situations. Um, you know what else is nice about land is that checking the comps on land is easy. Yeah. It's way easier checking the comps on land than it is like checking the comps on homes, for instance. You know, because um, when you're checking, you know, the comps on homes, everything with the home, ha you know, homes have to match up and, and be very similar. Whereas with, uh, with land, you're basically just trying to find other properties that are similar in size. Yeah, and what are they selling for, you know, per square foot within that area? You know, look at the different properties that are that are currently for sale and seeing how much cheap property there is, how much, you know, look for lots that are similar to that and see what the competition looks like. Uh, you know, Shade's exactly right. That whole research process, the whole research process period is going to take a lot less time and a lot less work if we're, work, if we're researching land and buying land and structures because we're not going to have to worry about the potential rehab cost. Yeah. You know, figuring the, yeah, out the condition of the, roof. you know, yeah, exactly the condition of the improvements and and uh, and you know also a lot of times you know we're um, you know we can be dealing with uh, with with larger you know with larger amounts, but it's not the amount of the investment that requires all the additional work. It's everything to check the improvements. Yeah, exactly. We don't have a, a crystal ball that we can look into and see you know what the inside of the property looks like. You know, what does the foundation look like? We have no clue. And so we're kind of guessing. And so when we're guessing, we need to make sure that we're really picking it up at a right price and we've really done our research. And so if you're getting started as a new investor, even if you have done real estate, even if you say, hey, I am a, you know, I've done, uh, you know, structured properties. I've done flip, flip and flip, you know, fix and flips. Still, getting started with land is going to be a lot safer because, because, even though you've done fix and flips, tax sell investing is a whole other beast. Yeah, especially um, with you know structured properties specifically. You know, because you um, can't send somebody over there to view. Well, it. and you know there there are just not that many properties in general. You know that that make it 
to a, you know a tax sale, you know, or they end up being foreclosed on, you know, by uh, you know by the county because of delinquent taxes. And you know, I think a lot of the time, you know, in fact, most of the time, it, uh, single family homes end up redeeming. And you know, you can spend a lot of time doing research on properties that redeem. In fact, you know, you might find, you know, people that, that are constantly looking at the nicest, stru you know, structured properties probably find their stuff constantly redeeming, uh, you know, because there are so many different reasons, you know, for people to, uh, to, you know, to redeem that property, you know, so low chances of it going to, well, uh, to foreclosure. And if it doesn't redeem, you know, it could get bid, get bidden up at the auction. All you've got to have is two people that both have more money than cents to ruin a, a property or to ruin an auction, yeah. you know, because if they're both buying and they're almost buying based off the other person's knowledge, thinking, well, if that other person knows, and this isn't always the case, but this is the case in most of the time that we've seen property yeah. bid for human psychology, yeah, outrageous numbers is that you know one person thinks that other person knows more information and so they're bidding based on that other person's knowledge and they're doing the exact same thing so you have two fools that are bidding against each other based on their own foolish knowledge yeah just kind of bid blindly yeah, yeah it can happen it happens uh, it happens with auctions all the time yeah, but absolutely. at the same time though auctions also uh you know you'll have auctions that end up that way and we'll, we'll see auctions too where uh you know they aren't, you know, the properties that are there aren't getting a lot of bids. Yeah, well, sometimes when you have somebody like that, you let them go at it at the beginning of the auction, you know, on some of those properties and, and let them wear themselves out. And then a lot of times we've seen good deals later on in the auction, you know, after they've, they've bidded and spent all their money trying to get yeah. the first five properties. Yeah, that is a good a good tip, too, is just uh, waiting for some of the money, you know, to uh, to run out. Yeah. In fact, you know, I remember our very first tax deed auction uh, here locally in Utah. The beginning of the auction, they had a ton of properties and they had even, you know, small strips of land and things like that that was bidding up at, at high values. In fact, one of our strategies at the time was seeing if you could make money off a side lot by offering it to the neighbor. And some of these side lots were bidding up in prices and, and even any of the regular property was going, you know, pretty high. Well, as the auction went on, near the end of the auction, a bunch of people had spent all of their money, and and there was properties you could pick up for minimum bids. Yeah, in fact, that was when we saw that sixty thousand you know dollar a uh, huge piece of land. One hundred twenty-eight, one hundred sixty acres. Yeah. 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 It was Still after everybody, everybody you know, blew the money. Yeah. Yeah. We just yeah, we, we if we had that money, you know, if we could have, you know. It, we were brand new. We're talking about 20 years ago, you know, and and you know we had maybe a thousand dollars in our pocket, and we didn't have nearly close to 60. But that would, you know, that sixty thousand dollar property, hundred sixty. Yeah, acres, somebody got a crazy deal on it. You know, yeah. Yeah. You know, somebody just, uh, you know, was able to basically get it for a minimum bid, you know, close to that, and uh, and so they walked away and I think they, you know, yeah, that was definitely the best deal that we saw anybody get. Yeah, there. that was the first time really too as well as it opened my, my eyes to land thinking, whoa, you know, these, there's that type of potential on land. There's that type of size of parcels that come up to auction. Now it's not going to happen every auction, you know, to have those type of properties, those size of properties, but you are going to have all kinds of good residential lots, commercial land, you know, uh, larger plots of land, all of these different types of land that we've talked about, you're going to see the tax sell full of them. Yeah. Well, I think that pretty much covers it here for us. Uh, you know, we would encourage that though, for everybody that you're getting started, uh, you know, to, uh, to get started with land and, uh, and to, you know, use that as, uh, as the way to learn, you know, and take those baby steps and then you can progress into any kind of property you want. Yeah, exactly. In fact, if you're, uh, interested in coming out to the three-day, let us know, and we're going to be going over this and actually showing you how to do this while there are the three days. So Yeah, we'd love to meet you in person. The, uh, the three-day events are, you know, great, really good opportunity for, for us to uh, to get to meet people, but some people learn better when they're in person, and, uh, and they can really get a lot out of it there, you know, as we can kind of work with them directly. Yeah, absolutely. We can sit down and talk with you one-on-one -on -one and go over your situation and point you in the right directions and help you with your investments. So 
uh, let us know if you're interested. And again, uh, appreciate you guys uh, for attending this evening. Yeah, have a great night. Thank See you, you. next week.